and we will get started. Okay, you guys, I'm so excited for our December team call. Johnny reached out to me. We've talked a couple times. He's our corporate mentor. He is the bomb. I absolutely love talking to him because he really like lights me up and is like, okay, let's talk about what we got going on. And I think it's so cool that we have that support from corporate because I think sometimes people don't have that. And it's so nice to have that support to check in with us, see how they can help us. And so we talked about him hopping on a team call and I'm like, yes, let's totally do it. Totally talk to some of our team. We're small, we're growing, but we have big goals. We have big dreams. I've talked to at least both of you on those. And I'm just excited what 2021 will, will bring. So I wasn't going to talk anything tonight about nine week control freak. We've talked about it all week. I've got more stuff coming at you as we're getting ready. You guys are both in ready to do this. I'm so excited for this launch and uh, we'll be ro rocking this in no time. Jill says she's uh, listening. She's just making some lunches before she has to pick up at practice if she doesn't want to distract with her camera. So Jill's listening. She's on. So I'm just going to let Johnny take it away so we can use the best the most of this time and be um, cognizant of your guys' time as well. Cool. Thanks, Lauren, for having me on the call. And uh, for those live, Ashley and Jill, appreciate you guys being on here. Definitely want to make this worth your time. And if you have any questions while I'm talking, uh, feel free to write that in the chat. Or if you want, you can unmute yourself and we can um, answer those right then and there if it feels appropriate with the flow of the conversation or wait till the end. Um, but yeah, so let me just tell you a little bit about me. I've been at Beachbody a little over a year. Previous to Beachbody, um, I worked at another networking company for about four years as a regional sales or similar role, national sales manager, uh, both in that I worked with a group of leaders like I'm doing right now. And then also I worked internationally with any new coach that jumped on board the company and trying to get them going. So really kind of I've gotten things from both perspectives as far as what do the leaders want? Um, and where they're having hard times, as well as what does the newbie looking at it? How are they looking at the experience and with their uplines? So I think what I want to address today, uh, and this comes from having done, it's probably been like 400 coaching calls at this point. A lot of them always center around the same questions. And part of these are, how do I get business builders? Okay. How do I get people that want to work the business? Um, and I think that is one of the most key questions that I get asked. And I want to say that one, it, it kind of stems into everything. And I think I want to just start going with this. Um, so when we're looking at this business, let me go with this whole thing. Is that um, basically if we're going to get going anywhere with the business, I mean, there's three ways we can to make money. We can do retail commissions. Uh, and when you start your business, that's how you do it. But there comes a point where there's only so much you can sell to where you're like, I'm not going to be making as much money as if I was building a team and they were really doing good. Okay. And then the second part is I can get like team cycle bonus, uh, which is having your team do a lot of volume. And then you get a little uh, proportion of that, which is a great way to make income. And then there's star diamond bonus, where if you become a two star diamond, five star, 10 and 15, there's some real income there to uh, maintain those ranks for a certain six week period in each quarter. What I want us to do and why I bring that all up is because a lot of what's based upon this is not just our efforts of getting commissions. Uh, that's probably always a, a consistent thing we need to do each month, like hitting success club as a bare minimum. Uh, but in addition to that, I wanna figure out how do I get other people to wanna hit success club or how do I get them working? And I think that's, always, again, the question I always get asked is um, how do I get my coaches working? Because I've yet to meet a beach body coach who isn't willing to work with their like downline. If the downline says, I want to go and run, every coach I've talked to is like, absolutely, I will work with you then if that's what you want. And if that downline says, I, uh, I need help, I need the tools, will we give that to them? Absolutely. I find it is very rare that a downline does not, is not given the tools of how to succeed. I find with the biggest part, hardship for these people is how do we get them actually doing the work? Because people may say they're going to do it. They'll maybe even jump one of your groups, maybe one of your push groups, but I'm always looking at how do we actually get them to go out there and work? Uh, because this is a voluntary business and they don't actually have to. And the worst that happens if they don't, well, if they never really got started, then there's probably not a whole lot that they honestly feel like they're losing out on. 
and so here's kind of where I want to go with this. I need these people actually to experience what success is in the business so that they would want to work and want to work further. So let me kind of explain this a little bit more here. It's like, I think everyone could become a diamond if they really want to. I'm fairly confident about that. It's, I don't know if a lot of people want to be diamond, if they want to be emerald or they want to hit success club. I've got to figure out, is that something that they would even want to achieve before I try to push that upon them? And I guess here's where I want to look at this is I never really want to push my own agenda on them. I think I want to figure out what is their agenda? What becomes worth it for every, I want to say, prospective coach that I might be talking to? And what might be worth it for any current coach that I have to get them working? And as I'm saying all this, I'm hoping it's feeling more intuitive. The more and more I'm kind of driving in the same issue of I'm trying to figure out what, I'm going to say this in a few ways, like what would it take to get your butt in gear to get you working? What's motivating enough for you to get you working and to get you working consistently? How much money do you need to be making every single month for this to be worth your time to get you earning this and doing this consistently? Or how much value do you need in your life from helping out certain people from their um, the fitness standpoint or from their uh, business entrepreneurial standpoint that we're helping out those people go to business to where you feel like individually you're what value and worthwhile? Like these are like, I'm, I'm combining all these questions because what, what I'm trying to figure out is what motivates you enough to get you up and running? And if all those things that I mentioned don't tend or some combination of them all don't tend to get you up and running then okay then we're then then it's a, kind of the situation then i don't think beach body coaching is right for somebody to be quite honest but i think there's something in there for everybody just about to get it going it's about us pulling that out of somebody and discovering what that is it's in a sense it's what makes someone tick and being able to push that along regardless of how successful or not successful we've been so i'm looking at this as how do i figure out what makes them tick well I'll say this, asking most beach body coaches, I figure out uh, wh why are you a beach body coach? And most of my talk to say, I want to help people. And then I'm like, if you want to help people, great. Why don't you just go help people for free or be a free fitness instructor? Like, why are you a beach body coach? And they start to tell me, and the truth of the matter is, uh, it's because they want to make money. They want to make money and be able to help out people because otherwise they could be a free fitness instructor or any of us could be that for that matter. So there's got to, the money element actually is the biggest factor there because without the money, none of this would be happening, but it's nice combination of the money and helping out people. So that's great. It's a good win-win. Here's where I want to look at it because money tends to be a big thing. Um, I want to de delve into somebody and try to figure out what's worth it for them to get them going. So I'll talk about this in two ways. There's financial for a lot of people, most people, and there's a non-financial piece. Now, I think I want to kind of, when I'm talking to a prospective coach, even a current coach, naturally, I've got to butter up the conversation by building rapport with them, hopefully getting them results in a challenge group. Um, so that way, those who get, because those who get results in a challenge group are far, way far and wide, more likely to become our next coach, to want to listen to us. We've helped them get success. We're going to help them try to get success again. In fact, by saying a lot of the same kind of questions and digging in uh, to figure out where this becomes worth it for them. Okay, so let me go with this and then I'll even talk about the challenge groups, but I'm looking at this as asking somebody, all right, I want to, I'm curious to know about your life. Like, are you guys doing financially well or are you guys kind of struggling somewhere? And I know for some of us might be feeling, hey, it's uncomfortable to get that more personable or personal and asking some of those things. I find most coaches tend to be too nice. Uh, well, I mean, too nice. you can be nice and you can also be asking these questions. It's not being rude. It's really trying to figure out a solution for somebody. But unless they reveal some of this uh, by us asking questions, we're never really going to get anywhere. Everything becomes surface level of like, yeah, you could work the beach body business. It'd be kind of fun, make some money. Those people don't stick around once the going gets tough. And I see this time and time again, coaches come to be frustrated because their coaches don't get working. Um, and I don't want us to be falling into a lot of that. I want it to be like, I can figure out what's work, something worthwhile for these coaches when the going gets tough, they want to keep going. So I'm trying to ask you this question about financial or not. If I'm asking you financial, and not, you can put this in your own words, but the notion I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so you do have some financial pain points. Tell me about them. Are they, what is it? Is it mortgage, rent, uh, um, car payments, student loans, uh, hospital bills, insurance premiums? I mean, you can just name some of them. Um, and I'm curious, how, how is those bills affecting you? Um, how long have they been affecting you? Um, how is, how are you responding to it all? How's your spouse responding? How's it affecting the dynamics at home? 
you are trying to get them to reveal to you the real pain point with this, these finances. And I'd even go further to be like, which one is causing you the biggest pain point? Tell me about that. How, again, how's that affecting you? How's that affecting your family? Because I want them to reveal to me because uh, people don't want us to tell them what their problems are. Uh, we, they need to tell that to us. And that's what we're trying to pull that out. Which one's your biggest pain point? How much is that? Oh, it's making you sad. It's making you depressed. Like they're telling us all this. It's getting, it's causing fights in the home. Like you'll hear some myriad of all this. And the idea here is to take all that, be a good listener about it. And then being like, okay, well, what would it mean if you could pay this off at least in the next 30 days for at least one month? Like not the whole bill, but just, or can we pay off this bill once in the next month? Um, how do you think you'd feel? How do you think your spouse would react? What would that be like to you? Because you are trying to get them to reveal to you or paint the picture of the value of making this payment. That is something that's real, tangible, and right there in the future for this person. It's not the, oh, what's your vision and goal of, I want to stay at home and make six figures and retire my spouse and quit my job. Like, those are nice. Those are a little bit further out there. I'm trying to get some reality of like, yo, what do you got going on in the next 30 days that we can get you paying? So uh, again, if it's going to be worth it for them, that's why I'm asking this question. So they tell me it's a car payment or something. It's $300 a month. That's where we're coming in and being like, okay, like $300 in our minds, we know like that actually sounds reasonable. That's where we want to come in after we've done the value points, or sorry, the pain points, the value points. Now we're coming in as a solution provider being like, okay, sister, based on what you told me, here's the issues. Here's where you really want to get relieve it and it'd be a value to you. I think coaching would be a great opportunity for you to pay this off. Let me explain further. Myself, I had XYZ bill and it was causing me these issues just like you. And I was actually able to pay it off uh, in my, when I like, put my uh, pedal to metal and it was great. Samantha on the team or Samantha that I know on my team has done this. Jessica on the team has also done this. And they also faced the same hiccups that you did that whatever they, they are stay at home with kids and um, it's, so it's been hard to go out and take another job, but they wouldn't actually be able to do it with this business. You're trying to make something relatable to this person and let, let them know, like, look, despite the issues that you've already presented me, why you can't do this, that like, there's other relatable people that also had that too, but we, they got through it. And you're trying to let them know, like, okay, we can help you get there. Now, $300, let me reverse engineer what that looks like to you. And, you know, when you talk about challenge packs, I think it'd be something brand new to these people because, well, they've already purchased one. They know it. they've been your challenge group. So the notion is, I'm trying to explain to this person, that's going to be about six challenge packs, about $50 a piece that you'll have to sell in this first month. I do think that's doable. Um, and what I would need you to do, and I, I think this is the part we're trying to get from people is, and you guys can set up what the work looks like to these people, but I'm trying to let them know, like, look, like if you're my coach, you'd be like, we have the success club business activity tracker. I would need you to fill that out six days of the week. So out of the next 30 days, I would love to get you to do like 26 of those 30 days, filling that every single day and putting the effort and meeting with me weekly to help you be able to pay this off in about 30 days um, and sticking to this and allowing me to hold you accountable to doing those activities. Because I know it is not easy to always do those activities for myself. I have a life, you have a life. It's easy to make these things the last thing in our bucket list or not bucket list, but our to-do list, right? But if we can keep these one of our priorities that we get done, we can get there. And I'm trying to explain this person that this prospective coach, letting them know like, look, I want to get a good effort from you for these next 30 days, because if you can cross that hurdle, I want that to be the proof in the pudding for you to achieve that success, to get that paycheck, to be able to pay that off and to experience what coaching really is like. And just even see why I'm doing it. Because once you actually get there, you'll see that, oh, I maybe get why Lauren's doing this. And so I'm trying to get this person committed at least, I'm not even saying 60 days or 90 days, just the next 30 days. And the reason why I'm explaining this all to you guys is because I'm, I'm really seeing that if a prospective coach maybe signs up, but kind of dabbles in this and never really knows focus wise what they're going for and never quite achieve that, they continue just to dabble. It never becomes becomes really worthwhile for them. They never really see it as a, a really potential business because they never put in the, the effort to match the paycheck that they need. I don't think there's any secret of how to get the paycheck. It's more like, can I get your button gear and get you working for the next 30 days? Well, it's not easy because it's not a guaranteed paycheck. It's a, I've got to put in effort with guidance that you know us as the sponsor are going to give them. 
but I, I feel very confident knowing if you're going to put in 26 days of work doing the BAT at a minimum and work with me once a week to check in and let us adjust, there's a great chance that we're going to probably get there. And I want to help you get there, but I need you to cross that hurdle so that you can get a good flavor of what that is. And I think that's probably the hardest part to get someone to do, but if we can get them to do that through asking all those questions beforehand of figuring out what's motivating to them in that next 30 days to get them there, great. And then if they will, will even allow us to hold them accountable to that, even better, because we, we don't really necessarily want to police them, but we do want the opportunity to, if we have to, to remind them, hey, it's been a week, I've seen so far only five of your seven days and we're getting close or something like that you can kind of prod them like, remember you said this is what you wanted, I want to see the six out of seven days, can I get you there? Because um, that's what we're trying to do is get these people accountable up and going and really allow it to where after 30 days, see what how close they got, maybe they hit the goal, maybe they went beyond it. And let that be the thing to de determine like, okay, let's assess how that all went, what struggle, what worked for you? Can we get you going another 30 days that this might be worthwhile for you? Do you want to make the car payment again? Did we get some of these people to reorder? We're going to have to get some new people. We can have those adjustment conversations with them, uh, but they're a lot more willing to listen to us because we helped them cross that first hurdle and made that first payment. And I guess I'll, I'll say this before maybe I even pause talking here is I, I share that with people because I need them to really cross that hurdle get over there. And once they experience that, for them to become diamond or listen to Emerald or become diamond, it's not because something miraculous happened. It was more like, oh, we got someone to 30 days successful. Then maybe got them that push them to get to the next 60 days or day 60 and then to 90 and then future. And it's not like, oh, something I did miraculously to get them to become diamond. It was more like they were more willing to probably listen to becoming diamond because, oh, they are now signing up a lot of challengers. We're telling them how to convert those challengers into coaches. And now it makes sense for this person to listen to about the notion of Emerald or Diamond because of these team volume of it's extra money that they could be making. That's where it becomes, again, more motivating for somebody, but it's got to match whatever their goals are. So uh, hopefully getting real, a real good gist so far about like, I am all about trying to figure out what motivates someone because I find it's not the tools that's the issue. It's the, can I figure out the motivation and get hold you accountable and get you set up on something where you're going to be working and let's get you in these 30 day pockets of success. Um, if you never quite get there, I don't know if you're going to get there in the future, quite frankly. So uh, like uh, this is just statistically what I've seen. So that's why I'm always trying to get somebody off the ground running while the iron's hot, um, while they're excited to become a coach to go and do that. So I'm, I'm going to pause there um, and I might even ask some of you if there are any questions or just want to hear your thoughts. Ashley, since I've already kind of asked you, if you don't mind, I know you didn't know you'd be on the hot seat, but um, if you don't mind, unmute yourself. You know, I'm kind of curious to hear some of your thoughts. You've said you've been in the business for a year. Um, does this sound like a radical idea coincide with what you've heard or is it making you think a little bit differently? Anything is good here. Um, I think it's definitely making me think a little different because I'm <clears throat> kind of one of those coaches who really hasn't made it past that first month. Um, hurdle yourself yeah yeah okay and and let me ask you what's been the uh the, the tough part for you to get there I mean, it's just easy to put off when I just I had a baby a year ago and so he's been a lot of my focus and so it, it's just easy to just be like oh I'll just get to that tomorrow Totally. I like that you're being honest and sharing that because that's your situation. You've been with us for a year, but you're on this call. So I think, you know, you're, you're wanting to take this somewhere. What you're experiencing is very much like what other coaches are probably experiencing, right? Or new coaches are experiencing. And so I think for ourselves on this, um, whether Lauren is an upline, upline or our direct upline is, and I, this is like, uh, I want to say mission should y'all choose to accept it. My, like my big challenge to all of you would be like, look, I know we're all busy and we all have the I, I, excuses sound so mean, but we're, we just have life, I guess I want to call it. And can we take it upon ourselves to know what our 30 day goal is, what's worth it for us? And then ask Lauren or us another success partner, whoever that's going to be like, okay, I listen to Johnny's thing. I want to get this going. Let the proof being my own pudding, if this is worth it for me. So I can make the money that might be worth it for me. Um, 
okay, I'm going to do 26 out of the next 30 days of the BAT success club, you know, business activity tracker. And uh, I'm going to do it before I go to bed. Like, you know, I'm talking to you, Ash, well, Ash or anyone else for that matter is like, you know, if you guys are gay, mission should you choose accepted. I would love for you to see that difference in your own self. So you get the own testimonial of like, yes, that is what it takes. I've got to buckle down, let someone else hold me accountable. And then also let that work, hopefully turn into a, a paycheck that's better at the end of the 30 days and be like, all right, that was pretty cool. Do I want to continue with this or not? I don't know, but at least you know what it's been like. So that way, when you're trying to get others to it, it's not this thing of like, well, I've never done it. So shucks, I hope you do it. It's more like, I've done it. I hope you do it. Because when we think about Beachbody and Challengers, usually why we want people to join our challenge group is because we've been in one ourselves and we got whatever we want to say results is or transformation to where like, yo, this was good. This was legit. I enjoyed it. Therefore, I want you to enjoy it too. So I think for each of us individually, we need to definitely cross that 30 day hurdle that might hopefully push us to 60 and 90 um, and, and so on. If that makes sense. So I think because after a while, at a bare minimum, filling out that BAT six out of seven days is going to be what it's going to take because consistency in this business is the hardest thing. I think it's, um, this is for anybody, you know, I'm just talking to anybody here is that I think we know what we got to do. Can we just go out there and do it? It's another thing if we feel like we are, we are doing the activities on the business activity tracker, and then it's not quite panning out how we want. It's not the activities that aren't working out. Those are proven to be the activities. It's more about what are we saying in those things that could maybe use some tweaking sometimes, which is fine. Um, you may have to talk to Lauren. I don't know, talk to me for crying out loud if you need to. You will, if you need a screenshot, your conversation, I'm not lying, coaches have to do this and things. Uh, not all of us are socially, I don't know, I say this as a gifted. So some of us need to tweak our conversations to better match, you know, warming people up. So um, just be aware of that, you know, as we're trying to guide other people to that. We may need to get a screen capture, but then again, that's further down the line. The big thing here is about figuring out what's motivating for you, and can I get you work in those next 30 days? Um, if, uh, let's see, who did we have? Jill, I know you were making lunches. Do you, are you available to unmute yourself? I'd love to hear any thoughts that you might have. Oh, she, yes. she is. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually sitting in the car now picking up someone from basketball practice. <laughs> I have a couple I minutes love it. before I have to run in real quick and get her and come back out. Um, but I think like this, this stuff is probably what I have let keep me from, like, I have been really close to diamond and then I get mm -hmm. like life. You said like life happens and I'm a teacher. So like mm -hmm. that takes precedence over coaching mm -hmm. and my kids have taken precedence mm -hmm. over coaching and, you know, I've had marriage mm -hmm. struggles. So that took preference or precedence over coaching so it's like I just haven't made it the priority that I that I want it to be like I want it to be a priority and I keep telling mm -hmm. myself I'm gonna make it a priority and then I just don't because like other things happen and I and I use them as excuses so that's mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hear you Jill hey you again you're not alone in that you know listen to everyone here and you you can meet yourself and let, I'll let you focus on driving um yeah, I think Jill brings up the interesting point that, yeah, life, all those things that she mentioned, I think a lot of us can listen to that and kind of relate to that, right? And I think where I think with ourselves, we've got to basically figure out, and if we don't know what it's worth it for us to get us going to stay consistent with this, then I really do think we need to get a success partner. Again, if this is something we want, here's where I look at this. It sounds maybe a little dramatic, but my, uh, one of the coaches I work with, her name's Chelsea Hiller. She's a school music school teacher. Um, I think she's like a two-star diamond now. So not like a 10-star or somebody, but she does make it a point to fill out the business activity tracker uh, every single day. And if she doesn't fill out a checkbox, she owes her success partner, which is like, you know, a battle buddy, whatever you want to call it, friend, and accountability partner, $10 for each box not filled out. And if she gets in a busy week where she doesn't, oh boy, that stinks. That's a lot of money. And I'm not trying to say that you guys need to do that because I'm not in the business trying to, bankrupt anybody here um or get anyone sad or depressed the idea here is i want to be encouraging where i'm trying to go with this she's done this because that helps her to be like i need this to make sure i stay motivated so i'm not paying out at the end of the week i'm getting my stuff done because i know i am busy and so you know mission should be any of us choose to accept is like what thing can we set up 
to make sure that there's a greater chance that we're going to do what we're going to need to. Now, again, I'd say the first thing is figuring out what's worth it to us. So that dangling carrot or that why in that next 30 days is worth it to us. And do we have someone to be like, all right, I'm going to let you hold me accountable to it. And maybe even put a little bit of a stinger of a consequence if I don't do it. I don't know if whatever that's going to be. It doesn't have to be paying out cash, but it can be something either embarrassing or a bit of extra service or community that you got to do. Whatever that might be, because um, sometimes we need a little bit of extra motivation, even for ourselves. Um, and I, I think this is a good, honest talk because it, it, I'm not talking to a bunch of people that are like, I'm doing all this stuff all the time, Johnny. I'm having a hard time getting other people. We're kind of in the thick of it ourselves. And so it's kind of a challenge. So I think it's we, when we can commit ourselves, going through this exercise is also going to be revealing to us to be like, okay, I see the struggle where it's tough, but I know what it's going to take as I start to do this myself, see the proof in the pudding with that paycheck. And I'm able to still go through, even when day 15, I'm like, oh, I don't want to. I still do it. I think that's going to be very helpful to each of us as we're coaching others, as we're getting them set up to wanting to go through day one to day 15 and being able to coach them through all of that and be able to be very relatable, be like, look, I sister, I get the struggle and here's what I've done. And I sympathize. And I want to also, one thing that I need to help be able to keep pushing you further. So I'm hoping we're all getting a little bit more jazzed up here, feeling like, all right, I, may, I do accept that mission, Johnny. Mission should you choose accept it that we're feeling like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure out my whatever is worth it to me in those next three days. If I need to talk to Lauren or someone else to figure out what that out is great, I'm going to find an accountability partner and make that happen. Okay. Now, this is all financial, friends. And the, I say financial because I said so much of this goals was figure out what's worth it for somebody financially. Uh, I said, and that's for most people. There are the occasional people will find, you ask them, how are you guys doing financially? Oh, my spouse is a doctor, attorney, making plenty of money. It's not an issue. So if I'm talking to them about the financial pain points and where money could play a big role in this, like, they can be like, well, I, why are you talking to me about that? They don't care, right? So where then I need to figure out with other people, again, this is more the minority of the people, but it's like, I'm thinking in my head, where does Beachbody help this person out? Well, it's got to provide a solution for this person in some way. So where's the advantage of this person becoming a coach? Well, I know for people, they find satisfaction in coaching by helping up people when they're helping them get results and or helping them from a business standpoint. I've got to figure out for this individual, is that something that's worthwhile for them? Because does this person feel like they have a lack of value or not feeling fulfilled in life? Because if so, and, and if that's affecting their emotions and their family, Beachbody is a way for them to feel more fulfilled through that leadership role and kind of the coaching role of helping out people get their fitness goals as well as their business goals. Um, and like anything, I would still need to reverse engineer how many lives do you need to change per month or getting these challenge groups and make a difference for it to feel like you are providing value to people and still assessing with this person, look, you're gonna have to do the BAT X amount of days per week in order to get the number of people you want. So whatever the, is the why, it doesn't matter. We still have to reverse engineer what we gotta do to get to the end result um, and then be held accountable to that. So I hope that kind of gives you some thoughts here. Like, yes, I think I can ha have a conversation with just about anybody now to try to figure out you know, what makes them tick. And I'm always trying to think, where is their pain what is the value of relieving that pain and how does coaching provide a solution for them to provide that value for them in their lives? Okay. Now I've talked a lot about coaching because I said at the beginning of the call, you know, I wanted to focus about how to get people wanting to work the business. Well, that's a lot of it. It's, how to, it's almost like how to get them jump started, And then it's more about maintaining. But I think that's the biggest part of our job is to get them jump started because I have had too many coaches who have been signing up I don't know, as they call them, discount coaches or hobby coaches forever. And I'm like, and they're like, yeah, and my coaches never got off and started running. And I'm, like, and I'm like, yeah, well, sister, darn it. I wish you could have at the beginning because you, who knows how many of those people you could have gotten to day 60 and 90, but you never even gone past day 30. So, and now it's been a year or two. So as such, those people are kind of jaded. They're like, oh, I've tried this beach body thing. It's not gonna work for me. Not that we can't get some of those people going, but where I'm trying to look at this is, if I'm going to grow my business, I got to look at it now is, can I have those conversations with my current team? And I'll figure out who's going to work and who's not. And if that's enough people I need, great, I can roll with that. But chances are, it's not going to be enough to where I want to get to. So I'm probably going to have to keep enrolling new people. So I'm always encouraging people to definitely keep enrolling new people um, so I can have those conversations, know those new people 
to get our business up and running even further, especially if the ones that we have so far are kind of stagnant and aren't responding to us. All right. So all these, everything I've kind of talked about has been predicated upon the conversation of have these challengers gotten results? So this part maybe won't take as long, but I want us to just talk a little bit about how to sell challenge packs effectively, get people results, because that's going to be the doorway to leading people to becoming a coach. Because I'll put this point blank, like people don't want to be a coach if they didn't get results themselves or they didn't have a good experience in the challenge group. I mean, it's like if I go to a bad restaurant, I don't want to go there again. I don't want to tell the people, well, maybe I actually want to tell people about it because it was a bad experience, but that's not what we want. We want it so that people want to get other people to join Beachbody as a challenger because we had a great experience, our own testimonial. We need to get as many people their own testimonial as possible because it is from this pool of people where the iron is hot and they are more willing to listen to us to become a Beachbody coach, to listen to us and trust us that we've guided them before with their pain points, the value points, and a solution, which was the challenge group, getting them results. And we've shown them already, hey, I've gotten you results here. Let's take this whole aspect into another part of your life from fitness to maybe more of the family and financial and get you successful there too. Um, and if you've established this rapport with someone, they're a lot more willing to take your hand, their hand and go further with it. So where I'm going to look at this when it comes to a challenge group is I always tell people people's like people, the biggest value we're giving to uh, challengers is actually the accountability that we're going to set up with them. As, as, maybe that sounds funny or not, but people can buy beach funny on demand on their own. They can buy psychology on their own. So they don't even need us. What are we providing for them? And is it the challenge group per se? Well, that's part of it. I think it's more the individual one-on-one we're having with somebody to figure out, and I mentioned this in the, the thing with someone about coaching, but I got to figure out what is your current pain points when it comes to fitness and nutrition? What would be the value if you could achieve that? And is a solution I'm going to provide, I, hopefully I can provide you a solution that becomes worthwhile for you. So if I'm talking to somebody here, um, you know, I don't go up to somebody and say, oh, you're overweight. You, you probably are sad, look miserable. Here's a share a cart. You know, like obviously it's offensive to people. The notion is, is I've got to really build up rapport with somebody over time to where I could talk about the fitness nutrition goals, right? And I mean, I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but the notion is I want to be able to figure out, all right, so you want to lose 20 pounds or 10 pounds. I want to ask a lot of wide questions. Why do you want to lose it? How is this impacting you? How's it affecting your family, relationship with your family, your, your emotions, your confidence, all this stuff. Why is this still an issue for you? Have you been successful with it in the past? You'll hear everything. Yo, yo. Oh, I'm not happy with it. I'm sad. Yeah. I don't feel as attractive. What are all these things? And then the notion is like, what would it mean to you if you could lose that 20 pounds to keep it off? How do you think it would feel? And they say all the positive things about it. Again, we're coming in as a third party solution being like, look, sister, I too have experienced all of these emotions that you experienced. Jessica and Samantha also I know have also been in your same boat. And they were also busy with work or stay at home or having a hard time to stay motivated. Um, or they also got pregnant. I mean, you'll hear everything and everything is just about relatable. And then the, the thing is, then we're trying to let these people know is like, look, I get life gets in the way and that's why you haven't been as successful, but I've been able to find success and I've helped others and others have helped others. I hold this accountability group that I've set up to where we can help you get the results that you're looking for, but it does take some work. But I think one of the missing aspects that you told me is, you know, is having the camaraderie and the accountability to get you going. Um, if you're willing, are you, I want to talk to you about my accountability group that I have. Are you interested? And I think that's what we're starting to talk to someone, get real with them and helping them figure out like, look, I see all these hurdles that you told me I have been addressing them right now. Others have experienced them too, but they've been able to get results. The way I am able to pierce through this out is through this group I set up. And I, I like to set up my challenge groups. You guys can do it how you want to, but I think there needs to be an aspect of they have to do the workout. And again, I'm asking for like 30 days. I think most people can get some level of results in 30 days. And if those were, if they're getting some positive results that might push them to more 60 days, I don't know, or at least I'm just trying to get the next 30 days. I'm never trying to get something crazy out of these people. I'm not trying to get a year's worth of, you got to do six different programs. No, I'm really just trying to get to work. Can I get you in this next 30 days on a fitness plan with accountability and a group camaraderie going? I, I think people can say yes to this. And so I'm trying to set things up with them and let them know like, okay, 
part of this group is you have to do the workout that we can find you a program, but we're going to have to have you stick to that on the days assigned. Two, um, there's a nutrition aspect that I want you to apply. Um, it has to do with the shake that, uh, well, we can talk more about that later, but I would want you to apply that every single day as well. Third, um, we have a check-in uh, policy that we have everyone have to check in on those workout days with like a sweaty selfie. And four, on those sweaty selfie days to help build community and keep accountability, we make it so each person has to comment on at least two other people's as pictures um, or the sweaty selfie um, as encouragement and kind of as accountability that, hey, we're all watching each other. And I found that by putting these kind of rules in, we've been able to get everybody to stay consistent, not drop out and have a high success rate of graduating the class. Um, I would love for you to be a part of that because I want you to get the results that you said is worthwhile for you. And I've seen it found that setting it up this way is the minimum needed to help you get there. But if you're willing, we can get you get there because I know you're gonna not wanna make this one of your top five priorities in the day based on what you told me of how busy you are. But hey, if you can focus in the next 30 days and get this going, we can help you get some results. Game on. I think you're trying to let them know that you understand all the pitfalls uh, that typically happens. And you set this group up the way you have so that way it's gonna eliminate a lot of those pitfalls, that there is accountability, that there is a workout, there's a nutrition aspect. And I don't find what we're asking here is anything too crazy. I mean, it's doing the workout, posting the sweaty selfie and maybe commenting on two people's pictures. That doesn't, that's not nothing too crazy. I think it's, can we, when we explained it all, we're hopefully looking, the person's looking at us as that coach professional in a sense, that we are not just giving them BS, but we're, we've got it set up to where this is what it takes to get people results. And you said it's worth it for you. Let's get you game on for the next 30 days. And so that's why I talk about it in this way. And it's not, because I know maybe some of us coaches might be thinking, geez, if I want it, I'm just trying to get them sold a challenge pack. And that was enough struggle already. And good luck. I want them. But I find actually this is the value that we're actually adding them to get them the results. And it all starts here. And so, you know, I, I know at the beginning of the conversation today, I've been talking so much about how to get working coaches. I mean, you can see that we're setting this up from the very beginning of how do we get almost like a, a working or um, a committed challenger. And you can see that it's, it's kind of the same process actually is it's the same skill set of digging in where this becomes, where it's a pain point for them. Where is it a value to them? And how am I coming in a solution that's relatable understanding the pitfalls, what would make you fall out of it and set it up, have things set up in a way to where uh, we're going to address all that so that you can get success and let the proof be in the pudding in the next 30 days to see if you want to keep going or let that kind of, kind of stop. All right. I'm going to take a moment here and I hope all of this is kind of circulating in your head. You're like, okay, yes, I can see if I can get people results. Channel group, I can probably get them results when it comes to uh, coaching because it's that same kind of accountability system um, with everybody. Uh, Ashley, I, I know I'm going to put you on the hot seat one more time. You've been a great participant. You know, now that I'm talking about the challenge groups, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Are you are you seeing the similarities as far as digging in to get these people? I guess you call it working or committed. Please. Um, yeah, it seems like it's basically the same idea which mm -hmm. is helpful to have one idea with each thing that you're trying to accomplish yeah totally um as i'm explaining i it does it sound like it's doable or does it sound like well i don't know if i could ask that of somebody or is it like oh no i can see how someone could respond to that positively um i think it's doable i think it might take me a little while of practicing that to be able to comfortably do it sure okay cool and let me ask you this um because yeah it does maybe it will get better over time to feel more comfortable um what seems to be the scariest part for you in those conversations with these people to have with them um i guess i don't want to seem like i'm prying too much into their yeah. lives come across that way. Gotcha. And let me ask you this. What is the difference between prying and then really trying to like dig in um, to find out someone's issues? Or are they the same? Or do you feel like they're different? What, what would be the difference? Because you're probably not alone in this. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. Not really sure. I don't know if there's actually a difference. Just... And there may not be because you're asking the same questions, right? Yeah. So I think part of it is... Um, 
I know we hear this all the time. It's, it's a little bit of the mindset, but I guess I want us to be thinking of it in the sense of, can I be a, addressing this person by asking the questions really with the notion of like, I'm asking this because I want to figure out, is there a pain point or is there somewhere where I can actually provide someone real value here by providing them what I've been in with Beachbody as far as either it be coaching or whether it be in my next challenge group? Um, because I do find we do have to cross that hurdle and ask those deeper questions for them to really respond to what we're going to bring up. Because if I left it as, oh, you want to lose 20 pounds? Great. I have a group that can help you get there. Um, that's nice. It's, it's not prying. But then I feel like we're not getting the commitment out of them because they don't feel like they've actually been heard and that we're providing something really meaningful to them, if that makes sense. So I guess for me, and I guess anyone else in, you know, on this call, hopefully that you can be looking at this as like, I'm asking the questions because I really want to get to know them to see if this is the right solution. Because at the end of the day, after all this digging in, if someone's like, no, I'd rather sit on my butt and eat Cheetos at home. At least we know that because we really dug in with the questions and we're not just trying to sell them something, right? So cool. Thanks, Ashley. Um, let's see here. Denise Sanchez, I haven't heard from you. I don't know if you're on the call and in, in the position to talk. Can you unmute? Oh, there she goes. I'm not sure when you join the call. Hi. Oh, there you are. You are. I've seen you on the call. Okay. You know, what are your, what are your thoughts on <laughs> all this? I think you've been on since the beginning. Um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. Yeah, since with this almost one. the beginning. Um, so I love all of what you're saying. Um, my, my, my personal issue is getting people to actually converse with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and so I'm reaching out to strangers now because I, no one in my life, I don't think is taking me seriously. And what's different about, well, I don't think it's different, but i actually have some certification. And mm. in nutrition and in personal training and yet I still can't get the people that know me mm -hmm. to listen to me and so and I so that's that's my personal struggle and so I'm trying I have to work with my coach actually to see am I coming off too strong what, what what's the deal here um because I don't have a problem with um asking them what they want and actually I think people like to say like to talk about themselves and like to say where they struggle. Um, but like me, I mean, I'm doing the same thing. Sometimes we use our struggles as our reason for not going forward, if that makes any help, any sense. And so um, I don't know, maybe the people that I know are scared to do it for some weird reason. I don't know. So I've been going out and trying to add people on Instagram and that feels really weird to me, really, really weird. Um, to try and befriend people that I don't know if I'll actually like them, you know, <laughs> I don't know them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're bringing up the uh, next point here is, yeah, if we've gone to a lot of the, our warm market already, um, how are we going to start going beyond that? And I mean, this could be another call on a way, another thing, but I think it's the notion of like, all right, I've talked about the coaching, uh, how to get people wanting to work a coach. And then how do we get people to become challengers? And it's like, well, I'm trying to get the, you're saying, I'm trying to get people the before that to where I could talk to them about fitness, nutrition, figure out what they are. And yeah, that I get, here's why I guess I want to say that. Um, I'll say it more briefly, but, but the notion of that is at least in today's world. I mean, the reason why they call this network marketing, it's because it's about the network of people that you know and trying to get conversations going with them and providing solutions for them. Now, if a lot of our network we have already used up, especially if it's been like in-person people that we've known growing up, and it seems like we've used all that up, like genuinely, then the notion is like, how are we going to find new people? And, you know, you mentioned on social media that if adding or getting new people and it's a little uncomfortable. That's okay. It might be at the beginning. I'm always looking at this as, and you'll probably see this, and you've heard this probably others, um, the notion is I'm trying to look at us as being like traffic generators, but to do that, we got to be um, content generators of value. Meaning I think people need to see what we're posting on social media as being a, something of value so that they want to interact with us. They want to follow us and they want to see whatever we're producing and they need to see that consistently over time. So they look at us as a person that is giving them value. It's almost like we're putting in relationship coin tokens 
into our bank account with them. And over time that helps. So that way, if we do notice that they're commenting or watching our stories or posts or commenting or liking, that they are gonna be more responsive to us, even if they are a stranger, if they've been doing this for a while, who will reach out to them with a hand of friendship and not talking about beach body first. Hey, tell me about your fitness nutrition goals or you know, obviously just normal rapport building that that can happen. And I find that doesn't necessarily happen overnight. Honestly, that takes some time, especially when it comes to social media is we're trying to build up a brand and presence for ourselves. And, you know, again, that's kind of the latter stages because, you know, the whole thing is we try to get with people we currently know in our warm market, get them going, get them in our challenge group, get them to become coaches. And a lot of people, they run with that for, I don't know, they could run with that for a year or years. In fact, they may not even have to branch out as much to their unknown market if they can get enough of the current market up and running. But yeah, there's a reality that we do probably need to get to our uh, unknown market. And that's usually where it takes an element of posting. And so that's part of the BAT, honestly, the success club tracker is that social media aspect. So um, I guess that's kind of, I'm not even a recommendation, but that, yeah, I just wanted to get share that insight on that. So keep at it if you are doing it, uh, because that is what it's going to be taken to try to get a new audience. It does take time. And I'll say, I like the post to be not just I mean, it's not just me and I say this jokingly because there's coaches out there of me in yoga pants working out. I think our posts need to be something of value, meaning what am I saying that's short to the point that is being like, here's what I'm doing. Here's why I'm doing it. And I'm hoping it helps you in your day, whatever the heck that means. If that's including with fitness or it could be anything else. Um, I think that's where it goes, where people are like, I like that, uh, Denise. I like that actor. I like Johnny. I'm following for that. So, okay. And I'm doing that. I'm get. I actually get a yeah. lot of feedback from those people that I can't come to get to join me. That they love what I post. That it's so helpful. They ask me questions. Oh, good. So you know, I know it'll come. Um, you know, okay. it helps me and keeps me accountable as well. So, um, I, yeah, it just takes time. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And this thought came to my mind, as you start to get more challengers who start to get results and even coaches, man, recognize the heck out of them on your social media, because I think okay. that'll be start to be really cool to see, like, you have been giving value through your post, but man, you're making a difference in people's lives. Like, what the heck is Denise Sanchez doing <laughs> to help these people out with their lives? I may be interested because I've been following her. I like her. So I think, and then those people that you've been blowing up because they got results, they feel cool. Like, oh, I'm one of Denise's special people, so... I love it. Oh, All right. Thanks. thanks. Lauren, I'm going to, I've done so much talking, but we've got some of your coaches to talk to. I think it's been great. Um, I think I want to turn the time back to you if you have any final thoughts. Um, yes, please. This was awesome. Thank you so much. I really like, yes, working coaches, like that's, I think, you know, where we struggle a lot. And I know that's something that people struggle with in general is finding the working coaches. And even in, you know, so that some of our coaches know, and Amanda's, you know, a coach on a leader on with us, even in our leader thread today, you guys, people were saying like, how are you finding people on Instagram? What, what are you guys doing right now? That's working. So know that you're not alone in the trenches. Know that there's, there are even leader coaches out there that are still trying to figure the way and, and maybe needing to, to, to find the path that's working well for them too. But consistency is so, so key. And I'll say like, I was in the beginning a full-time working mom of two trying to get it all done. And there were many days my head would hit the pillow and not one invite would go out. I didn't connect with maybe more than a couple people and maybe got a post up that was like half hearted and the business did not grow. And so when I started to become consistent, finding the time, and like I say all the time, if I send out, if I'm sending out 20 invites a day, that doesn't mean you have to send out 20 invites a day. You find the number that you can be consistent with. Your business is going to grow with consistency. So I just love that so much, Johnny, because I think like the bat, the success club tracker, whichever you use, use it. It's the best tool. Um, Cause when I started, we didn't have anything like that. We just had uplines that created some sort of tool and you had like, gosh, Amanda, didn't we have like 15 different ones and you're like what am I using this time and you're trying to get yourself organized that tool if you just check off your boxes the to-dos are just so simple and it makes it really nice um I also liked what you talked about with the um 
challenge packs and the accountability. Like even I like took down feverish notes on that because I do talk a lot about that, like being consistent and like giving it 30 days. And a lot of times I, cause when people are like on the fence, I'll be like, seriously, give it 30 days. Beachbody and I believe in it so much that you will get your money back in 30 days, like empty bag. It works if you work, but you have to do the work. Like it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, um, when people talk about like, well, I'm not losing the weight, but I have a Peloton bike. Well, if you're not on the Peloton bike, it's not going to work. Same way with your workouts, right? Like if I don't follow my nutrition plan and I eat ice cream every night, I'm not going to lose the weight. So I loved that. But I also like celebrating like that. You, you said, you know, graduation, like I was like, oh, I love that. Because then, you know, we could really, and I don't know why I've never had this light bulb moment, but I was like, man, we could really do some sort of hype up. And really, that's one of our four vitals, you know, celebrate the victories out there, celebrate those wins, you know, being consistent in the same way with going back to the tracker, like doing it 26 days a month, celebrating those wins of being consistent, whether it's your business or your fitness journey. So I, I, this is so awesome. Thank you so much. I have so many notes. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. All right. Well, thanks everybody for letting me be on the call and, um, Lauren, I guess I'll let you close out and I'll, uh, exit and leave. All right. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks. Johnny. Bye. Bye. Okay. You guys, I want to be cognizant of your time. I want to just say, say thank you so much for being on. This was so, so awesome. We got Amanda hopping on. I'm excited to see your beautiful face, girlfriend. And I was excited you brought Denise on and Allie, um, that's Alice's phone. She's down there. She's going to be a new coach with us next month. I said, girl, hop on, check us out. Um, I'm excited. She was with us before and she's coming back. So I'm so pumped to have her. So you guys have an amazing night. If you have any questions, let me know. But remember, you've got, you know, nine week control freak, be hyping that baby up. Customer launches on the 21st. So I have a launch countdown. I'm going to be posting it in a little bit on my, on my stories. Utilize that if you want, create your own. Um, there's some awesome stuff out there. Um, utilize the free group of the launch that we have next month or next week. We're doing the free five days of fitness. So I'll be getting some information out to you guys. I got to wrap some of the stuff up that I have planning that will be coming out to you guys shortly, but utilize the free groups. Cause I'm really digging in on them. Like I go back and forth with these, but I decided like, I'm going to try these free groups and go all in with them and really invite people. So invite first to your main group. If they say no, invite them to the free group. If you've been inviting people and they're not responding or anything, and they've been saying no in the last month, again, tell them about this new, this new launch, this new product, this new amazing program. Talk about Autumn. Like we know her programs work. We know she's dynamite um, with nutrition. And if that's not your case, my gosh, both of these nutrition plans coming with your programs is it's like, like I tell people like, this is unbelievable. The deal that is out there in this bundle pack, plus you get all of this equipment. Um, And actually what's fun in that free group that we're doing right now, Jeff, uh, I convinced Jeff to go live with me on Saturday in the free group to kind of talk about some of the um, equipment pieces that we have up there. He's like, are you gonna make a fool of me? I'm like, no, I'm not. So we have to support him. So he's excited. He really loved the program. So. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll keep throwing invites as I tweak them, as I change them so that you guys have them to utilize. Um, You guys have any questions for me about the launch or anything like that? You're good? Okay. All right. You guys have an awesome day. Thanks so much for hopping on. I'll get the recording out. Love you guys. Have a good night.